Those who use the books as a defense when you rule them out of line should be excluded from the campaign. Simply put, ask them to leave or do not invite them to participate again. That sounds great for a kind of the kind of game that might be played here among mature people. But um, when those the people that you're playing with are you know your only lifeline <laughs> to uh, <laughs> to sanity, even though it's insane, uh, that could be hard. The way I got into it was my father was and is a journalist, and this was around the time when there was uh, a lot of hoo-ha about young minds going crazy with, with role-playing games. And it, there was a really horrible movie with Tom Hanks, a television movie, if you ever want to dig up something hilarious, called Mazes and Monsters. But it's about, you know, college kids playing some weird, devilish role-playing game similar to Dungeons and Dragons. I am part you, a holy man. In reaching the ninth level, I have acquired many magic spells and charms, the greatest of which is the graven eye of Timur. Tom Hanks starts to believe it's all true and is, you know, I think he, he was trying to commit suicide. Going to join the Great Hall. You can't. It's a trap. I have spells. I'm going to fly. You don't have enough points. I am the maze controller. And then people, there were, you know, a lot of opinion articles and so forth about uh, the danger these games pose. My father was going to write something and he bought the little beginner's box and um, he ended up not writing the article but I found the box lying around the house and opened it up. And So I think I was first drawn to it because of the possibility that it might make me crazy and uh, put me off the deep end which I, I think living in, in my town in New Jersey, I thought, thought of as a good thing. Not the suicide part, of course, but just becoming unhinged uh, by, by the imagination. You play a certain character, and, and perhaps the best and the worst comes out of you through that character at times. And, uh, you know, we didn't switch around. There was kind of one charismatic guy who ran the whole show. The game can be played on such a kind of majestic level, but he believed that it should reflect the, the hard realities of, of life. And so... We'd never get past second or third level, and we'd always die a kind of sad, pathetic death in a back alley, you know, one drunken orc beating us on the head or something like that. Why didn't you ever, did you ever want to DM? Um, Yourself? That was like wanting to be president, you know, that, that just wasn't going to happen in this environment. <laughs> it was just, you know... That was a pipe dream, really. But you did want to sometimes. Well, I think that, you know, I, I became a writer because I couldn't be a DM. I think that I wanted that control over a world, so I turned to fiction. When you're, when you're writing, you're both the, the dungeon master and, and one of the players at the same time. And it's, it's you're kind of creating problems for yourself to solve. You're creating uh, dungeons and, and worlds for yourself to uh, explore and not die in. All members of the expedition should be ready and willing to part with any goods, money, and magic items in order to save lives. Never happens. Never happened. Um, failing that, each should be willing to fight. Uh, I guess we should have read this. Failing that, each should be willing to fight to the death to assure the survival and success of the party. That definitely was not part of the ethos. Do you find that, like, the generation that grew up playing video games, has that play into the way that they write? I find a lot of my students who, who grew up playing those games are now trying to figure out ways to integrate that experience with fiction writing. It could run from writing in a, in a more realist way about people playing video games or trying to uh, capture some essence of uh, the perspective um, without even mentioning video games. Um, you know, first-person narrator, first-person shooter. There's some, there's some overlay there. But I'm, I'm always interested in the notion of what, what, do people, what do you think people would never want to play in terms of a, a setting or a, a theme? or a... Uh, Wizards of the Coast, a couple seasons ago, had a season that everybody had to play an evil character, which I think can sometimes work if there's one evil character in the group. 
But when you have an entire party of evil characters and everybody's backstabbing everyone and everyone's out to get everyone. <clears throat> right. I mean, you could, you could have the setting be you know, a terrorist organization, mm -hmm. but every, nobody's backstabbing necessarily. Right. So every, <clears throat> it's not evil alignment, yeah. even though... They could you know, all they're... be evil, but on the same side. Yeah, yeah. But this was all evil, all f out for themselves, you know. That's called the United States of America. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I'm, I'm always suspicious of writers who say, oh, my characters ran away from me. They just do whatever they want. I just followed them. And there's something a little disingenuous about that. You know, they're all, they're all you. It's all pieces of you. So it's more about letting, letting, your, uh, letting yourself go in, in this direction or that and seeing what happens. And also, you can undo everything. Whereas if you're playing in a game, you can't necessarily undo everything without upsetting the, the order of things, the collective sense of um, of consequence in a in a game. W when you're writing fiction, of course, you can if you make a bad turn, you can erase it and start again. <laughs> <laughs>